Let's finish up our unit on series and convergence by looking specifically at alternating series. And all an alternating series is, is a series whose terms alternate between positive and negative terms. So we have the general form of an alternating series written here. Um, oftentimes that negative one raised to the n power just indicates that the terms are going to switch back and forth between positive and negative, depending on where your n value starts. So let's look at a geometric example of an alternating series. Specifically, this is what's known as an alternating harmonic series, and we'll talk more about harmonic series in the next unit. But let's take a look at what this series would look like. The terms in this series would give us terms such as, well, when n is equal to 1, I've got negative 1 to the second power, which makes the first term positive. So I'm starting out with 1. Now, the next term, when n is equal to 2, I know then that means I have negative 1 raised to the third power, which makes this next term negative. So we would have negative 1 over 2. And since we know that this series is now alternating, I know that the next term is going to be positive, And now I just have positive 1 third. Next one after that would be negative 1 fourth, positive 1 fifth, negative 1 sixth, and so on. And this series is just going to keep on going because it's an infinite series. Now, how would we describe the behavior of this series? In other words, how does the behavior of the terms affect the changing values of the partial sum of the series? And here, I'm just having you kind of pause the video and think about this for a moment. And hopefully, you had some type of conclusion that pretty much stated, well, we're seeing that as the terms converge to 0, right? Because even though these terms are alternating between positive and negative, we're seeing that the absolute value of each of these terms is getting closer and closer to zero. So these terms, even though their signs are changing, are still converging to zero. And that, as that happens, that means that the sum, which we'll call s of n, converges to some finite value concerned right now with what that finite value is, just being able to identify that this series is going to converge to a value. And so what this kind of just broader um, observation of this series does is it gives us a baseline for understanding the alternating series test, or AST for short, as I'll often call it. And this test for convergence says the following. If you have an alternating series, and if this alternating series satisfies the two following criteria, then we can say that it is a convergent series. And here are the two conditions. Number one, and there's a little bit of a missing part here notation-wise, this should say that the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 has to be less than or equal to the absolute value of a sub n. In other words, that for all n after some finite value of n, that these terms are decreasing. Or another way of saying this is that the absolute value of the terms, absolute value of terms are decreasing. Okay, so the absolute value of our terms are decreasing. And in terms of justification, there are a couple of ways that we can show this. For the intents of this course, um, you really just need to list off the first three or four terms of the series and just show that the absolute value of the terms are decreasing. If we want to be very precise here, then one method is to just look at the derivative of f of x, or the derivative of a sub n, the general term a sub n, and to see if it is decreasing that way. Right? That isn't always required, but it is a surefire way, way to make sure that the absolute value of these terms are indeed decreasing. The second condition is that not only do these terms have to be decreasing, but the limit as n approaches infinity of our a sub n has to be equal to zero. So if a series is alternating and these two conditions are met, then we can confirm that this series is indeed a convergent series. What if this test fails? So what if this test fails? Well, we would say that if AST is not met, or the criteria for AST is not met, then it is inconclusive. It may still very well be a convergent series or a divergent series. We don't know. We must move on to another test. What's nice about this is 
if this second condition is what is not as met, then often we'll see that the nth term test will help determine its convergence. And some students often ask for an example of a series that doesn't meet the first condition. Um, an example of that might be something like where a sub n is equal to sine n over n. And I'll let you chew on that on your own time if you'd like. But for the rest of us, I'm going to move right into these practice problems. So I won't do all of them, but I'll hopefully give you a few to get you on your way and have you start thinking about using AST to test for convergence, okay? So let's look at this first one, a pretty straightforward alternating series. Uh, let's just write out the first couple of terms here. So when n is equal to one, I know that my that's negative one to the second power, so my first term is gonna be positive. So my first term is going to be one over one plus one, or one over two. My next term is then going to be negative, so negative one third. My next term is gonna be positive again, so now we're, this is going to be one over four, and then plus negative one fifth, and so on. And these terms would continue this way. So one thing that we could show here is that the absolute value of one third is greater than the absolute value of one half, right? In other words, we can say that the terms decrease in absolute value. Absolute value. We do not need to show what's going on with the derivative of a sub n. We can, we totally can. But what I've shown here is, is sufficient justification just to show that the terms are indeed decreasing in absolute value. So another way, of, if we don't wanna write out that whole phrase, we can say that, we can do the following. We can say the absolute value of a sub n plus one here is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of a sub n. In other words, the next term, the absolute value of the next term is less than or equal to the current term. The second part of the justification that we do need to show is the following. To see if it meets this criteria, does the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n plus one, so in other words, the a sub n without that alternating part, does this equal to zero? Well, this is about as basic as it gets in terms of limits. This clearly is equal to zero. So we could say that first condition has been met and this here condition has been met. Therefore, this series, this alternating series, must be convergent by the alternating series test. So in terms of justification, we want to show that those two conditions have been met and state the test that we have used to determine this particular series' convergence. All right, let's try another one. Let's try number two. So for number two here, if we look at this, and let's try a different color here. So looking at this series, let's start writing out the terms um, just so we can see visually what it looks like and also as part of our justification. The first term, when n is equal to 1, we're going to get a positive term and it's gonna be one plus one over one, so that's just two. The next term is gonna be negative, so I'm just gonna write negative, let's see, that's three over two. And then this would be four thirds. And you can see this next one would be plus negative five fourths, right? So not too complicated of a series. So here we can see that the terms decrease in absolute value. So again, I could say something like a sub n plus one, absolute value of a sub n plus one. And let me actually just switch around the justification just to show that this is the saying the same thing. And the absolute value of a sub n is greater than or equal to the absolute value of a sub n plus one, right? So that condition clearly has been met. Now let's look at the next part. Let's look at the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one over n. Okay, now we're seeing that this clearly is not going to be equal to zero. In fact, this limit is equal to one. So we're gonna actually put a but statement right here. So even though it meets the first condition, it does not meet the second. The limit of this is equal to one. It is not equal to zero. Therefore, we would say it's inconclusive by AST. So AST does not help us here. It does not determine that this series is convergent. But if we look at this here, the fact that we did all this is already the justification for another test. And so we can say here that, hey, whenever the limit of our a sub n is not equal to zero, then we know that this series is actually divergent 
by, do you remember the test? The nth term test. So AST here did not help us determine the series convergence, but in the process of doing the work or showing the conditions for AST, we ended up doing showing the justification for why this series is divergent by the nth term test. All right, so let's go ahead and do one more and I will give you the time to work on some of these others on your own, but let's look at something like number six. Jumping to this one because it's our first series that we have here where they're not giving us a sub n in terms of uh, in summation notation. So it's going to be on us to do that. Well, first things first, let's come up with our a sub n rule. So what does it look like is going on here? So a sub n, clearly this is an alternating series. So we're going to say that this is negative 1 raised to the n power. And you can say n plus 1 as well. It doesn't really matter too much. Now, all of this is being multiplied by what? So when n is equal to 1, this looks like we're doing 2 times n all over n plus 4, I believe. Let me just double check to make sure that works. When n is equal to 2, I get 4 in the numerator, and I get 6 in the denominator. All right, great. So we've got that. So now let's look at the absolute value of a sub n. So are, in other words, are our terms increasing or decreasing in absolute value? And we see here that a sub n plus 1, the absolute value of a sub n plus 1, is actually greater than the absolute value of a sub n. In other words, our terms are increasing in absolute value. So right away, it does not meet the convergence. So inconclusive, we can't say it's divergent just yet. It's inconclusive by AST. So AST does not help us here. Well, there's really not many other tests that we've learned for convergence. So let's jump right to NTT and see if that helps at all. Let's look at the limit as N approaches infinity of, again, just A sub N without the alternating part, 2N over N plus four. And this series, since we have the same degree term in the numerator and denominator, all of this is just going to be equal to 2. And honestly, it doesn't matter what that value is. Since we know it's not equal to 0, we can then say that this is divergent, or this series diverges by NTT. Okay? So again, try these other problems on your own, but hopefully you're getting a good sense of how to use the alternating series test for, to test for convergence. Again, make sure that you are clear on what justification you need to show. You need to show that it meets both conditions. And if it doesn't meet the condition, making sure we understand that it doesn't mean that the series is not convergent, but we have to use some other test. And oftentimes, NTT is a good one to jump right to because it's pretty much connected hand in hand with that second condition.